Hi, I'm Lynn Hardy, and this is The Living Word. According to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says, You have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. We know that the scriptures were written thousands of years ago, but because they are living, we can receive from them every time we read it. We'll, we'll be at a different level with God, and he'll bring us a deeper understanding about it. And Jesus himself is the word, according to John chapter 1, verse 1. So here today, we are looking to our Lord for his word, what he wants us to know. And that is what I'm endeavoring to bring you each and every week with the living word. Today's episode is the fourth signpost on the roadmap to heaven, visiting with Jesus face to face, and it is called time. In prior episodes, we have established not only what heaven is and what the secret place is, where the Bible talks about it, why Jesus wants us to come there, but we've also established the other three signposts. The first one was communion, the second one was focus, and the third one was desire. If you've missed any of these episodes, I, I urge you to go back and look at them. And so you can rightly apply all of them together. So this last signpost is time. Let me tell you, um, when I found out this signpost, it wasn't like the others where there's a clear vision and that there was, you know, this and that and the other thing. It was more of the whisper of the Holy Spirit. And I realized I had been walking this one the longest. You see, time is something that we all have. We all have the same exact amount of time each and every day. And that is the first application of this. I sought heaven for two years, meeting with Jesus in heaven. It wasn't until I relaxed and sought Jesus content to experience him in any way he might have for me. I, I was just worshiping him. That I began visiting the secret place. So let's talk about the two applications for time. As I said, it's precious. We all have the same amount, rich, poor. We all have 24 hours in a day. We must choose what we spend time on. Let's look at that in scripture. Luke eleven nine. 9. This is the Amplified Classic Version. So I say to you, ask and keep on asking, and it shall be given you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you shall find it. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door shall be opened. Seeking our Lord, knocking on the door. The, this takes time. It's not, oh, I'm going to, and it's going to open. No, it's not a magic jack-in-the-box. It is, it takes time. It takes time to walk the roadmap to heaven. It takes time sometimes to enter into the secret place with those face-to-face -face visits. Now, the second, the second application is, it is the Lord who has the key to open the door. He decides when. We must always keep this in mind. Oh, I forgot this. I forgot this for many years. And it and we must know that he will do it in his time. His timing for our life. So we look at Revelation again, 3, uh, verse 7. This is the American King James. And to the angel of the church in, the, in Philadelphia write, These things said he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and shuts, and no man opens. You see, our Lord opens the door. It is up to him. He is the only one who can open it. We must know that he will do it when the time is right. He has a plan for our life. He knows right where we are, what, what he's developing inside of us, and it will happen as he wills. According to 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, God is not slow to fulfill his promises. It says this, 
To begin with, you must know and understand this, that scoffers, mockers will come in the last days with scoffing. People who walk after their own fleshly desires and say, where is the promise of his coming? So this is talking about the second coming of Jesus. Remember, Paul, many of his letters that you see, a lot of the writings in the New Testament, you can see when you read it that they were expecting Jesus to come back. He said, I'm coming back soon. They expected him to come back and rule the world. And so here Paul is, or I guess this is not Paul, this is Peter. Sorry, sorry about that. Peter is telling them, God isn't slow. He does it in his timing. And we must not scoff at what we understand. We must not lose hope. So Peter advised patience. Let's go on to the next verse. This is, we're continuing to read. We're going to skip down a little bit, but this is the same Second Peter 3. This is verse 8 and 9. He said, nevertheless, do not let one fact escape you. Beloved, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord does not delay. He is not tardy or slow about what he promises, according to some people's conceptions of slowness. But he is long-suffering. He is extraordinarily patient towards you, not desiring that any should perish, but all should turn to repentance. You see, Peter was encouraging them that whatever the Lord has promised, he will fulfill, but it will be in his time. He is not late. So we must, he is really patient and long-suffering with us. Don't let the enemy tell you you've been disqualified. Don't let the enemy speak negatively to you about this is not for you. No, this is for each and every person the Lord prayed. It's not only for those who are my disciples, but all those who will believe on their words, that he wants us to be with him where he is to see his glory. So don't let the enemy say you're disqualified. Don't let him say that you're not good enough. Just keep loving the Lord and seeking him. We must rest in God and continue in patience for his timing. Here's Roman 5, 1 through 4, and again, the American King James Version. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God is not angry with you. He's not at war with you. We have peace with God. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Things may not be going perfectly. Things in our life happen. There are tribulations. But these things come, and if we will focus on the Lord, if we, it works patience within us, and patience and experience and then experience hope. We must have patience and wait for God to do it, for the Lord to open his door. We need to seek him. So we have some driving directions for you today. The first one is a biblical principle. It's the principle of sowing and reaping. Now, if you've been a Christian a while, many of you have heard this principle. I'm bringing it here today because it's something that takes time. When you sow, it doesn't always grow up overnight. So you know that it's you sow and then there's a time for reaping. But I'm going to put this principle of sowing and reaping into context. I want you to see it in the Word of God. This is Galatians 6. Um, verse 6 through 10, the American King James Version. Let him that is taught in the word communicate to him that teaches all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. For he that sows to his flesh 
of the flesh shall he reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And as therefore opportunity, let, let us do good to all men, especially to them who are of the household of faith. So many have used sowing and reaping to ask for money, to demand money, to suggest money. And even though it is here that sowing and reaping is giving unto those who have taught you from the word of God, that that is sowing to the spirit and, and out of the flesh and you'll reap, we can apply that principle also into the time we spend, spend focusing on the Lord, the time we spend walking the roadmap to heaven. The Lord said that he was bringing a generation into the secret place in a new way. All other doors were closing. So it's important for you to know and to see these things and know that you have to sow into them. You have to spend time. Sowing takes effort. You have to spend time sowing into the things of the Spirit, and then you will reap from the Spirit. Now, here is another verse, and it's in the Old Testament. Remember, the scriptures, the Old Testament is good for learning, for doctrine, for improving, um, improving our lives and our walk with the Lord. So in Isaiah 40, 28, he speaks about what, what will help us to be strengthened for our journey. It says, have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint. To them who have no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You see, it is the Lord who renews our faith. When we and renews our strength for walking that road map, we won't grow weary if we're walking with him. He is the one that when we wait upon him, wait upon him to do his will, be content with where we are at the moment with him, love on him, that he will renew our youths like the eagles, that he'll renew our strength and will mount up on wings like eagles. You probably heard that applied in many ways, and it can be applied in many ways, but this is about waiting on the Lord for his will to be done in our life. Don't grow weary. Just keep focusing on him. We're, you know, Remember what focus was, worship and meditation. Keep spending time with him. Keep developing that relationship with him. Now God sent a dream concerning this, concerning all of this a long time ago. And we will talk about that in the next series of messages from the living word. We're going to begin talking about prophecies and fulfillment of prophecies in the year 2023 to encourage you along this path so that you know what season we are in. And as we do this, as we move on past the secret place lessons, remember what you've learned. There is a roadmap to heaven to visit with Jesus face to face. There's the book. That was the short little guide um, that's a free and available at the website. Doesn't have all of this stuff in here. This, these videos have a little extra um, to help you apply it. But remember, remember the four points. These are the four words that the Lord brought miraculously. He said, it begins with communion. That was the first one. You must develop your relationship with Jesus by sharing your innermost thoughts and feelings, by learning and applying his ways. Walk with him each and every day. That's communion. We must spend time focusing on him. How can we see him? How can we visit with him if we're not setting aside time in our day to focus on him? 
Now, when I first began my walk with him, the only I had small little kids. The only time I had was a 20 minute nap and then before I went to sleep at night. And I would just trust the Lord um, um, for my next day and I would, I would eagerly jump into bed because I'm like, whew, now I get to go spend time with the Lord. And that's okay. Whatever time it is, whatever point in the day, find time to focus on him. The third, the third signpost, the Lord must be the desire of our heart. We must guard our hearts from desiring anything more than him. Even if it is just meeting with him, that actually can be an idol. That can actually cause um, our, a, a delay in visiting heaven. We can't place anything above him, even seeing him face to face. We have to be content knowing he is Lord. He is sovereign. He'll do it in his timing. And that is the fourth signpost that kind of is interwoven through all of them. Jesus holds the key of David, which opens the door to the secret place. We must wait upon him. He is our King, our Lord, and God Almighty. We wait upon his timing. If you wanted to see the king or the leader of your country, would you be demanding and, and, and decreeing? Would you be um, wanting it right now in my time? I want to do it at 5 o'clock on Tuesday. Or would you have to wait upon that leader of your nation to, to set up a, a meeting with you? Would you have to be willing to do it whenever they were willing? You see, we have to remember Jesus is the Lord. We are his servants. We need to submit to him, to rest in him, to know that he has a plan and trust him. And it will be in his time. That is the final message of the secret place. As I said, um, I will be creating over the next year, six months, a year, possibly, I'm not sure how long it'll take, um, a book with the visits to the secret place, um, with information about heaven, heaven. So if you're interested in what heaven will be like, if you, if you want to know more about one type of secret place visits, you can, you will ha I'll have that for you to encourage you. The Lord said that, hmm, the Lord gave me a word once in a church, the message about the woman at the well. The Holy Spirit said, this is you. First, they will believe because of your words. Then they will believe because they too have seen him. So I will give you what, what the Lord has revealed. He said he was going to reveal heaven to me so I could make it real for you. So I will be obedient to him. I believe now is the season to complete that book about heaven. I will complete that book so that you can have an account of what heaven will be like. So we can focus that this is our eternity, is heaven. This is where we'll be, that this life is temporary, whatever we're going through. Now we still have to pay attention to this life. life. There is work to be done. We have to take care of our families. But we have that eternal hope, that hope that blooms as we wait upon that final destination, knowing it is going to be so awesome when we get there. That is coming as the Lord wills, as he frees up my time to do so. Until then, you can find many of the accounts on the website um, or on my website that will link you to my blog. So the blog has all the encounters, you know, that, we, that I've had woven in. Um, and just for encouragement for you, if you desire that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for each person you have brought to hear this message. I thank you, Lord, that this is your message. It's not mine. I thank you that you desire for each and every person to be with you where you are so they can see your face. I stand in agreement with this prayer today, Lord Speak loudly to them, guide them, correct them, help them along the path 
that will enable them to encounter you in a stronger, a more vibrant way where they can meet with you face to face and see your glory. Lord, you said the ironic blessing, the prayer was a prayer to enter into face to face visits with you. So I'm going to pray as you've asked me to do. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for guiding us here today. May the Lord bless you. May he bring you gifts that you need. May he bless you with all that you need in, in the spirit. May he keep you. May he place his thorny hedge of protection around you to guard you, to protect you. May you be pricked with thorns when you're going the wrong direction so you know that you are, so you can turn back and go to where your Lord is. May his face shine upon you. May you receive more and more knowledge and wisdom. May he reveal himself to you in greater measure as you seek him. May he grant you shalom. May his peace surround you, that peace that frees you from all the effects of sin. May it come in greater and greater measure as you travel along the path to your destiny in a deeper relationship with him. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Now, if you want to know more about that ironic prayer I prayed, remember that is in the series about prayer, um, how to pray. And you can learn more about why I prayed that way and held my hands this way. <laughs> um, so go through that series if you want to know more. Until I see you again, shalom.